Well, I know on the schedule it says today we're going to talk about um, Amazon and Jeff Bezos, but I had another video that I made that I really wanted to show you guys. I'm going to post that video tomorrow. So sorry for the inconvenience. I just want to give myself one more day to make sure that it's well done for y'all. Um, but I have a topic that has been heavy on my mind that I just wanted to talk about today. Hey y'all, it's Becky here from the Becca Sphere, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Becky, and every Monday and Thursday, with some other videos sprinkled in here and there, we talk everything about the climate. The problems, yes, but the solutions, yes. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, go ahead and click that subscribe button, hit the like, share, comment, all that good stuff. So, confession, I kind of started to write off conservative voices in my thinking of climate change solutions, which sounds completely ridiculous because anyone who wants to actually solve climate change knows that everybody needs to be at the table. So that doesn't make any sense, but hear me out on why that ended up being the case. So for a little bit of context, I'm 23 and I grew up in California. And so um, my main voting interest was to vote for climate change action. And so my first election that I was able to vote on was 2016, which was between Hillary and Trump. Now granted, Hillary was not as big on talking about climate change as like Biden is now, but between someone who actually believed that climate change was real versus thoughting, think, thoughting versus thinking that it was a hoax it was a pretty cut dry decision for me because by that point by 2016 the topic of climate change was already a partisan issue it seemed that it was something that democrats were taking on where republicans were lagging behind in the issue but behind the scenes i know that's not really the case I think there's an equal balance of Democrats and Republicans who both believe that climate change is a really big issue that we need to talk about and we need to do something about quickly. So I realized that that bias that I was starting to get um, by politicizing the topic of climate change myself in my own life was coming in the way between me and a whole group of people who have their own ideas on what to do about climate change and what they think would be best for the country. But as I've started to read the next book in our Climate Book Club series, which is called Climate Courage, one of the things that they talk about is that we need to get past it being a partisan issue. And on my part, having this platform of the Beckett Sphere, I realized that it's part of my responsibility to make sure that I am getting information from all sides as long as the information is reputable and um, fact driven. So when I read that part about um, partisanship and I wanted to address the biases in my own life, the first thing I did was I went to Fox News because I wanted to see, okay, well, what are they covering with the climate? To be honest, I had looked at them before um, in like 2018 and they really don't talk about climate change much at all. And when they do, they mostly try to delegitimize the topic. So I have a pretty low expectation, honestly, of how they cover it. And unfortunately, for the most part, it hasn't changed that much. They really don't cover climate change very often at all. And when they do, it's acted as a skeptic issue and they don't really support any solutions. As Americans burn to death, people like this swung into action immediately. They went on television with a partisan talking point. Climate change, they said, caused these fires. They didn't explain how exactly that happened. How did climate change do that? They didn't tell us, but they just kept saying it. In the hands of democratic politicians, climate change is like systemic racism in the sky. You can't see it, but rest assured it's everywhere and it's deadly. And like systemic racism, it is your fault. The American middle class did it. They caused climate change. 
They ate too many hamburgers. They drove too many SUVs. They had too many children. A lot of them wear T-shirts to work and didn't finish college. And that causes climate change, too. And worst of all, some of them may vote for Donald Trump in November. And if there's anything that absolutely, definitively causes climate change, and literally over 100% of scientists agree with this established fact, it is voting for Donald Trump. So that, that was disappointing. And I actually, I looked then at um, how, what percent of Republicans still watch Fox News regularly. And I found that it was about 65%. So even though Fox News is not talking about an issue that the majority of Republicans care about, Republicans are still using that as a very important method of getting their information. Then I was thinking, okay, well, what about people that really do care about the climate that are more of conservative political view? Where do they go to get their information? So this is where I got a bit of hope because there is one um, kind of conservative conservation or conservative climate change action hub called Republican um, with an E-N instead of an A-N. So that was one site that talked a lot about uh, what different conservative views are regarding what should be done about climate change. Moving on to talk about the issues of solutions instead of still questioning the science. And the other site that I found interesting as well is the American Conservation Coalition. And that's another one that's run by mostly conservative, mostly millennial um, people. And they have really good factual articles and, um, and discussions around climate solutions. So that really excites me to see that it's a lot of um, people like me on the other side of the political aisle talking about what needs to be done about these issues. I don't want it to be a partisan issue anymore. And obviously that's a really easy thing to say and not an easy thing to actually make happen. But seeing as both majorities of both parties think that it is an important issue that needs to be addressed and there are different sites that are working hard on finding solutions, reporting on solutions, and talking overall about climate change, that gets me excited to see where it goes because we need everybody to work together on this problem for it to get solved. So there are going to be points where, for example, I'm considering um, covering the most recent uh, Fox News coverage of climate change that I can find and kind of fact checking it. But also, I'm just doing that from the perspective of making sure that climate change is talked about accurately. If there are other sites that don't report on it accurately, I want to cover and address that as well because I want the misconceptions to go away. But the main thing that I wanna focus on is not keeping it a partisan issue, but moving it to be just something that everyday people sit around and talk about it. And it's comfortable regardless of your political lean. That being said, I highly recommend that you check out the podcast, How to Save a Planet, and particularly the episode on how to talk about climate change with family. I'll leave a link below, of course, um, because it actually goes through the conversation that was had by Bob Inglis, who is, I believe, one of the founders, but currently the executive director of Republican. And he was the former South Carolina uh, Republican congressman. And he had a conversation with his son. His name's Rob. Um, <laughs> so Rob and Bob have a con had a conversation a little while ago. Where Rob came back from college, having learned a ton about how important the issue of climate change is and he basically told his dad who is a republican congressman that hey you need to act on this issue because it's really important and through their method of conversing bob completely changed his strategy and started really focusing on climate change as a main issue eventually going on to work for republican so that big change happened all because rob was able to talk to his dad bob in a particular way that what 
provided open conversation and um, allowed Bob to change his stance on climate change. And so they talk about how to go about having these conversations and to depoliticize the topic of climate change. So I highly recommend you check that out. And with that, that's all I had for this, but I hope that you found it interesting. And tomorrow I will talk about Jeff Bezos and Amazon's climate plan and what that looks like. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.